You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. In the studio with you, it's JJ and Darren. We've got a special bonus episode with Joelle from Dash Force. Welcome, Hi, guys. Joel. Excellent. Welcome to the show again, Joelle. Now, you were on the Wednesday show, and people can tune into that to hear us talk about some news things, and you participated in that. This bonus episode, we're going to be focusing on mainly your Dash Force uh, system or your 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 what you're doing with Dash Force as well as Dash as well as the DAO. Darren, why don't you start it off? Yes. So Joel, you are the lead editor of Dash Force News. Is that yes. right? And uh what exactly is Dash Force? The Dash Force is an organization under uh Dash's DAO or decentralized autonomous organization that sort of deals with the human facing side of Dash. Like PR? Yes, among other things. Okay. It started as a, uh, the, the colloquial term would be troll patrol, right? Because online in the, in the online debate and discussion over cryptocurrency, a lot of heated discussion, of course, happens. And um, a, lot of, a lot of times Dash sort of got left in the dust and did not get accurately represented. And so there's a lot of misinformation out there, a lot of bad reputation just thrown just from the fact of letting competitors run free with the narrative. And so Dash Force started as a sort of counter to that or sort of response to that to make sure that it was well represented in, online and it sort of morphed into a greater ground troops sort of project, right? So right now Dash Force keeps to its original mission of making sure everything's well represented online. Also runs the Dash Force News, which is a news publication which fills a crucial gap since there's a lot of reporting, of a lot of bad reporting on Dash in, in particular in the crypto news uh, news world, and also runs like funds local meetups and is going to be moving into the business adoption and integration world. So it's 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 definitely in like a um, not 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 like a sales force, if you will, because you're not necessarily selling someone insurance policy or anything like that or a vacuum. You're, it's, but it's sort of like evangelizing and uh, um, touting the benefits and, and, and potential values of Dash. And, and we've talked about Dash now on the show last Wednesday. You picked out three uh, key things about Dash that you, you like. And uh, you mentioned the, uh, the privacy, the governance model, and the what's that? Instant transaction. Instant send. Yeah, that's right. So um, now the Dash, let's let's just dig into the Dash Force news once more. You, now on the show, you said there were three people involved. What's what's yes. going on with that? Yes. Yeah, so there's um uh, there's three three full time members of the Dash Force right now. Uh, myself, uh, Mark Mason, and Mastermind. Mastermind. Right. Yes. Nice. I it's, like anonymous people. Yes, <laughs> definitely. It's uh and so the three of us sort of like sort of run the thing, and there's a there's a a few part timers that are also underneath the thing, but that, that's a little bit more in flux. It's like the the three amigos is the the colloquial term we refer to ourselves as. So now, do you do you three divide the the, the Dow pays Dash Force a certain amount of money, or does the Dow pay you? It it uh, Mastermind is the guy who masterminded. It. Oh, okay. imagine that, right? And so initially, uh, that the other two of us sort of started on the lower rungs, just sort of. Get involved, getting you know, helping out, and then now it's like the three amigos thing, and moving into this new proposal, right? Because everything and everything funded by Dash moves on a proposal cycle, right? You submit a proposal every month or a couple months, and you can get funded or you know, not funded. Sure. And so, moving into this next proposal cycle, we're def- we're going in three way, doing the whole doing the whole thing you know, as a as a triumvirate. Okay. Excellent. Wow. Wow, that's a good word, right? Yeah, yeah, triumvirate. Yeah, I haven't heard that one. <laughs> so great. So um, now, um, I, I've noticed some reporting on the site, and I, I thought there was some insightful information there. Uh, uh, you have a whole series, right, where you've done uh, reviews of Droid or wallets that use that uh, uh, interface with Dash. Is that right? Yes. For example, that's one thing we've been writing about. Okay. Uh, well, w- w- from your perspective, now that I have you here, which which wallet do you think is the best out of all the ones? Well, so first, I, the first caveat I got to say is if when crypto in general, it's mostly an Android's world, just because this is so experimental of a, of a stage we're in right now. And 
Android tends to be a lot more forgiving about new and different technology. Sure. So my personal one that I use the most is just called Dash Wallet. It's by Hash Engineering, and it's a very simple, clean wallet. Most importantly, so Dash runs mo- you know, similar to Bitcoin, just send and receive just like Bitcoin and other tokens. And just like if you have Ethereum in a multi-coin wallet, it's basically like a Bitcoin, right? It's not, it's a Bitcoin type thing. It, you don't get all the cool features of Ethereum in that wallet. And so a lot of, uh, a lot of Dash wallets are the same thing. It's just like a faster, cheaper Bitcoin, but the Dash wallet by Hash Engineering has instant send enabled. Awesome. So that that's the one that I personally use. Now you, you said instant send was really uh, a big thing because it's the the only yeah. Uh, so the 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 wording thing I sort of yes. pra- practice. Excellent. It's the only major payment system in the world that offers instant permanent settlement. Right. So, so that you had to get that, into that a little bit more. That means it's the only payment that's like cash to where I hand you the cash and we're done. Right. You don't have to check back with me. You don't have to say, well, let's wait for the cash to like, you know, finish growing mold on it or whatever. It just, it's done. Right. It's over. And with a no. swipe of credit card, it's like that part is over, but you got to wait like 24 hours to see if it clears or if there's a chargeback. The Bitcoin, you send it. And in the old days, you know, we had 10, 20, maybe 30 minutes to see if it went through. And now pff, hours, days. Yeah. Well, so, <laughs> so instant send is something merchants would definitely appreciate. Uh, that seems like a really good point of sale tool. Yeah, certainly on ground merchants. Uh, yes, might like that. In fact, uh, one of the, as I believe it was last year's uh, North American Bitcoin conference, they do this machine called the Dash and Drink. Someone repurposed an old vending machine and added a little instant send uh, enabled thing. So that's one thing. The one of the reasons why when you broadcast a Bitcoin transaction. The reason you have to wait for confirmations is because without a confirmation, right, it could not go through or it could be double spent, right? You could send the same transaction to a different place with a higher fee and then it goes somewhere else. You could, and with a machine, a machine's dumb, right? You can trick the machine. You can say like, oh, there it goes. It appeared. Take your drink, run away, and then take take the money and repeat and, you know, just rob the machine. Sure. And so it's a little bit harder if you're looking a person in the eye and robbing the person, but the point with this is instead of having to wait around for confirmations, what they're doing with the Dash and Drink machine is just using instant send, and it's, it's confirmed, it's permanent, you get your drink immediately, 1.3 seconds. Wow. So moving on to talk about uh, the Dash dash Force, is there, so you, you said there your, your proposal was moving forward, and just tell us a little bit about that proposal process that you, you're going through. Yes. So the Cliff Notes, real quick breakdown of what proposals work, right? There's these things called masternodes, which are stakeholders that help run the network, and they vote for all the development budget of Dash. There's okay. this 10% of the block reward, 10% of all the new coins created and the fees and all that. What, what is the block reward right now for um, Dash? I'm not exactly sure. I'd have to look that up. 3.6 Dash. Okay. Well, cool. Yeah, so 10% of that goes... Over a month? So they collect 10% over... Over, over a cycle. The cycle, the proposal yes. cycle. And that gets put into a, a super block. Is that right? Yeah. So when that gets that um, that gets set aside for proposals that are funded, and if there's not enough proposals to eat up that whole ten percent, those coins do not get created. Okay. Yeah. So there's a ten percent that's set aside for development, right? Like like the core team, except it's uh, it's whatever use the master nodes see fit. So in the past, it's been like 80 or 90% of it's been used up by the core team, and you know, rightly so, right? And then there have been a few random community projects that have then gotten funded. And now that, that percentage, just like when Bitcoin used to be 80, 90% of the cryptocurrency ecosystem, with maturity, that ecosystem diversifies. And yes. so um, as far as I know, the Dash Force is the first um, sub-DAO organization, the first organization that's not the core team that's funded by the, the treasury. Wow. Yeah. And, th- and that is definitely one of the things that we uh, talk about when we mentioned dash is the fact that the blockchain itself is paying people to do things for the overall protocol. Right. So it's, it's uh, I think that is and the fact that it's voted on by the master nodes, by the stakeholders, you know, I think there's a lot of really valuable aspects to this. And, 
the 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 coin has seen a, a good rise over the last month and a half, two months, uh, going from uh, about eight dollars or so up to it just peaked over a hundred a couple times, and now it's sitting at around ninety. Yeah, it's been a it's been a pretty wild ride, but uh, a lot of people were predicting that it would just go crash after that. But part of the thing is when you have um, so many master nodes, right? So master nodes stake a thousand units of dash and earn recurring rewards for doing that, for staking that amount and voting to run the and voting for network proposals and helping run the network. And, and how many of those are there? Um, about what was it, forty five hundred? Yeah, it's forty five hundred. So yes. four point five million dash is tied up in master nodes. Yep. Yes. Out of the seven point two eight million dash available circulating right now. Yep. Yes. And so, of course, at any time you can move any of these funds out. The thing is, once you do, if you move funds out of a master node, then you get kicked to the back of the payment queue, right? Of the rewards queue, because you earn recurring you earn recurring rewards, right? Forty five percent of the block reward goes to these master nodes, and so if you decide to move the money, you get kicked out. But that doesn't. But some sometimes people take a master node and just liquidate it. They just take the thousand dash and just put it on the market and sell it if they think they want to. But the right now, um, a single master node will give you a, a substantial chunk of change. In fact, I'm gonna um, check the exact amount that you'd get in U.S. dollars. Now, a big part of these master nodes is that they're always running, right? These these are nodes that process the yeah. instant send yeah. that basically yes. contain a full blockchain. Yeah. So generally, if you're running a master node, you want to have a like a VPS or something that uh, you. It's hard to run out of your house. Right. Uh, you need a static IP. You need IP4 address currently. Uh, uh, you, yeah. So, I so. mean, if, you, if you're having run, running out of your house and mm-hmm. let's say your internet sucks and it goes down for whatever reason for an hour, then, then you, you go back to the end of the line, right? Yes. You yeah. go back to the end of the line. And if you had, so say last year, it'd be like, say, $5 per dash. It'd be $5,000. For Masternode. Sure. That, if you did that last year and just sort of left alone, kept it running, that would be earning you about seven dash a month, which is calculated to about $630 a month. So imagine you got like two Masternodes, say $10,000 $10, last year, you just decided to throw into this, see what happened. Now you're making like 1200 bucks a month, just recurring income that, you know, that anytime dash goes up, it's going to go even up. Like a lot, some people can live off of that, or at least they can supplement their income. They can, you know, quit their job, do something part time for that. And so there's something about like, if dash goes to the moon or you know, when it did, right. And yeah. still is there. Right? Well, you know, I, I think dash being a hundred, uh, you know, we don't really talk about price. We don't talk about speculation, but I think dash at around a hundred dollars right now is, is a, is very appropriate. I think it 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 should be between a hundred and two hundred at this point until Bitcoin really, uh, some until something happens with Bitcoin, right? But I mm-hmm. I think Dash, uh, you know, it's it's I think it's still undervalued given all the value that the protocol offers, yes. And the fact that you've got more than half of the circulating supply locked up in these master nodes. Now the master nodes do now you use they are obviously financially, uh, incentivized. To continue operating and yes. to continue to provide this this service. Now they they are bolstering the network. Now this is something else that Dash has that a lot of, in fact, <laughs> many other currencies don't have is the large supply of both people mining the normal miners like every other proof of work currency. Mm-hmm. But then they also have this this really rich group of master nodes, the proof of service. Right, and then and then you have the normal nodes, the normal people running their nodes, and sure they might not be running them all the time, but when they're using Dash or when they're doing that thing, you know they're running their node. The the network behind Dash is is really quite robust. Yeah, it's rock solid, and uh, we've seen some tests of that uh, over the last few months. There have been a few uh, DDoS attacks that have taken down a number of master nodes. Not not very many, but those people were. Uh, Using a like a one dollar a month VPS service or something like that, just something they were not, uh, they were not stewarding their node very well and not doing the accurate, the adequate protection, and they you know, got kicked, kicked down, kicked to the back of the queue, and you know they lost some money out of that. So do you think they're going to make that mistake a second time? So I, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, well for their sake, but you yeah. know the, the network's been incredibly robust with all that, and that's one thing that uh, a lot of people see is a problem with Bitcoin, or at least. You know, potential vulnerability is full nodes 
there's no necessary incentive to run nodes other than, you know, you can have that out of the goodness of your heart, right. support for network and agenda if you're trying to push a specific uh, protocol change there's or no, something. There's no market incentive yes. is what you're saying. Other than, okay, if there would be if you, let's say, you were holding on to 12 Bitcoin, which is quite a bit of money right now. Yes, and that's a, and that's sort of like an indirect incentive. Like right. If you're holding on to exactly. all that, you're like, hmm, maybe I should run a node just to make sure... Yeah, but a lot of people just hold on to the Bitcoin, like ask someone else will do it. Yeah, or they don't even hold on to the Bitcoin; they just sits in the exchange until it gets hacked. <laughs> yeah, until it gets hacked, and then they lose everything and get you know paid back with um, tokens. Now, Dash has made some strides recently with uh, getting more uh, uh, vendor acceptance as well as other payment systems on board. Yes, and so like that's I mean, one of the other big things that Bitcoin has going for it is it has all this legwork of getting the point of sale operational. But now you can't use the point of sale because the fees are too high. So yes, and that's been a one of the it's a one of the secret weapons of Dash that a lot of people don't see is first off you got a really tight business development team under the core team that's aggressively going to these businesses and talking to them and working out deals and promoting things. And so Bitcoin doesn't necessarily have that. that's sort of an individual basis. As someone who likes Bitcoin and just thinks it would be great if this exchange or whatever would then approach them or the the business would approach Bitcoin and just be and like, we should integrate this. But Dash has dedicated people working on that. And the secret weapon is you can actually, through the master node network, right, there's funding available to pay things, to pay services and businesses to sort of bump Dash ahead of, yeah, let it punch out uh, above its weight class. And yeah. that happened, there's been a few, like, for example, Wall of Coins is a peer-to-peer uh, cryptocurrency exchange, a lot like sort of like a, the local Bitcoin's um, cash deposit, but with some streamlined with some extra security features. And it, initially, they were using you know just only supporting Bitcoin, you know Bitcoin for cash. And then they they approached the Dash network to say, hey, we'd like to do Dash, but at that point, Monero was above Bitcoin. I mean, above uh, Dash in market cap. And then there's a, the- a bunch of demand for Ethereum. And so the Gen Trust, the company that owns Wall of Coins. In just in general, was like, well, well, let's go one of these other current. Let's integrate these ones next. And then the project lead of uh, Wall of Coins, Robert Janito, who's since turned into a big Dash fan. At the time, he said, "Well, I'd rather have Dash first, But he's like, "I can't convince my company to go along with this, right?" So he says he approached the. He did a proposal before the master notes. Said, "I want, I want to integrate integrate Dash first, but you know, can you help?" cover some of the development costs and that just so I can convince them, say, hey, look, this you can integrate Dash for a whole lot cheaper because it's being subsidized. And they said, sure. So Wall of Coins integrated with Dash and with Instant Send. So with before, uh, what Wall of Coins works as is like an escrow service. Sure. And so before what you do is you'd say, hey, I want to buy some Bitcoin. And then you'd say, oh, someone's selling $50 worth who has a Bank of America account over here. Go deposit $50 cash here. And then... Once they confirm, that'll be released from escrow. And then you got, you know, however long it takes Bitcoin to confirm to get there. Because of Dash Instant Send, you can go, you know, be having a coffee, be like, I, I need 100 bucks at Dash. You walk over into, into like, the, the bank next door, deposit $100, and by the time you get out to your cart, it could be in your wallet by then, right? Yeah. It's And that's pretty powerful. In fact, there was a proposal that was passed also by Wall of Coins to integrate that directly into dash wallets and we'll see what what ends up coming of that but that could be really cool if you have a dash wallet you can just hit buy dash walk into a bank throw some money and then it appears in your wallet and then it all without having to do aml kyc compliant stuff and deal with all the wait times and the paperwork with that right setting up an account you know, yes. yeah so to summarize with the tangent basically dash can cheat <laughs> right dash can yes cheat by just Having, throwing money at a problem. Yeah, just just throwing just throwing money. Say, look, I know understand we're not as big as Bitcoin, but we can make it worth your while. Now, Dash is is basically so it's looking right now based in market cap. And if you listen to our last episode, we'll talk about why market cap is both a good and a bad indicator of a coin. Or as Darren said, yes and no. Yes and no. Dash is number six right now. Market cap is according to CoinMarketCap.com is. Six hundred and sixty-two million dollars. There are, as I said, seven million, seven point two million, uh, almost seven point three million dash in circulation. So uh, trading is pretty good. The volume over the last twenty-four hours has been eighteen million dollars worth of dash. 
uh, it's this very stable coin. I mean, the price, other than the rise, the precipitous rise just recently, since that rise, it's pretty much been bouncing between 190, it seems. And that seems pretty good for a stable store of value. Yes, exactly. Um, and obviously the gamblers aren't going to really like that. Well, that's that's the, the interesting thing is if you are a Bitcoin trader, you buy Bitcoin and it goes up, you don't make any profits on that until your exit point, right? Sure. You entry point, you buy it, and then when you exit the market, right, no one cares how high Bitcoin goes if it crashes again and you sell at the crash, right? It's only if you sell at the peak. So you have to, you have, it's the sort of the pump and dump mentality of you want to get in, and then when it goes up, in order to, to take those profits, you have to get out. Now, the thing with Dash is you throw money into a masternode. And then the price goes up, and then you're like, well, I could sell the master note, or I could just not, and it's going to keep kicking me money. And yeah. so there's that. It's sort of like a shock absorber against dumps. Sure. Yeah, it sounds... So now, uh, you said you were a part of the, the Troll Patrol, and so there's a lot of criticisms, and some of them are very weird and strange and probably very wrong. But what I want to ask you is, what are some of the... I don't want the crazy criticisms or the crazy things being said, but what are some of the the arguments being made that uh, some of the worst ones or or worst offenders, if you will, that you have corrected uh, as far as Dash to sort of clarify things? Yes. So worst offenders. Well, there's a lot of them and a lot of them are crazy and some of them are reasonable. One of the big ones is privacy because Dash came out with the private send, uh, which is called dark send back in the day when Dash was called dark coin. And it's been, it was, as the first to market to sort of this thing, Dash is focused on other things rather than privacy, but that feature is still there. And so the one big criticism, of, oh, Dash is not a, it's not a real privacy coin. There's these other ones that are more private. And no one has ever broken a private send transaction. In fact, this was one of, in the early days, right? And it's hard to sort of classify coins by their users because those users come and go all the time, right? In the early days, uh, so Monero was out of the gate about three months after Dash, I believe. And in the early days, there was a lot of friction between the communities because there was a lot of competition over that that sort of privacy thing of like, who's the most, you know, mag- you know, magic crypto mirror on the wall? What's the most private coin of them all, right? And just sort of competition over, well, my coin's more private than yours. No, there's a lot of that going for it. So, there was a, a challenge, a long-standing challenge for over a year uh, of a private send transaction gone through four rounds of mixing, right? Four out of a potential eight, and I'll explain in a second how this works, right? Can you crack it? Here's the transaction. Who did it come from? Where did it come from? And it's never been cracked to this date. So there have been no prob- no major problems with Dash privacy during that whole time, right? And it, you could... S- not say the same for some of these other coins. No, in fact, Monero, if you listen to uh, episode, I believe, 205, we talk about how the Monero's uh, ring signature method, basically you, you can get a one in five guess as to which was the actual input-output. So, um, But you said, so how does how does the, the, the private send work? How does the mixing work? Yes, so I'm going to give the, the allegory first, right? Say you got 10 people and you got $20 each and you just want that to be private. Like they have a they have a history behind them. So what you do is you all dump all that money into a table behind a curtain, right? In denominations of a $10 bill, a $5 bill, four ones, and then a bunch of change. Okay. So you just dump all that and there's some guy at the table who just like sees all this money and just like mixes it all up and then puts it back into $20, $20 total amounts and then just says, all right, here you go, someone. And the hand takes one. Here you go, the next guy, hand takes that, and gives it all back. So all these people have the exact same amount of money they used to, but now it's been mixed up. Each one of those inputs has been mixed from another person that they don't know who they were, and the mixing party doesn't know who anyone was. Now, is this part of the, the protocol, or is this handled by the masternodes? Yes, this is protocol level handled by the masternodes. Okay. You know, answered yes to both, right? Okay. So what the masternodes do is they link together users, right? There's, there's someone here who has this this amount they want to mix. There's someone on that side who wants to mix. And then they just, they identify the inputs and then they swap them over. There's a, there's a, for a more thorough and accurate detailing of how this works, there's a, an episode of Dash Detailed where uh, Amanda B. Johnson goes over this in some greater detail. So if you go to YouTube, go to 
dash detailed private send. Yeah. Right. And you'll find exactly that. Oh yeah. We, we've, uh, we've talked about Amanda's videos a few times on the show. Um, so the, the dash master nodes, once again, come up adding another service, but they're getting paid for it. So it, it's just amazing. This, this development that has happened, uh, and in all the cryptos, you know, it's, it's like the evolution of, of an organic creature, if you will, obviously they're digital and they're ones and zeros, but it's it, they get so big and they divide, right? That the whole idea of cells dividing over time and uh, different cells taking on different properties. Dash is definitely a a very innovative coin, and I think it's it's. Uh, well, I'm not giving you advice to buy or sell. I think the value that the coin is at is is just not. It just it's it seems irrational almost. Yes, but, it's um. I think it's entirely rational from a different point of view. Right. I mean, I, I agree that it's complete. That's very undervalued at this stage. And I mean, a lot of people are saying it's undervalued at 10 or $20, but no, I think around a hundred dollars is still kind of undervalued, but it's because it, tr it operates in a completely different world than the crypto hype bubble. Right. A lot of um, Bitcoin was sort of a proof of concept of what blockchain technology can do. It's sure. like this thing works. Yeah. It just it just sends from here to there, but it works. It's great. And then there's a lot of real world value of the use of Bitcoin that went behind that. And there's also a lot of speculation of like, we're gonna invest in this new technology. And then all these other coins, well, we got this thing too. Oh, there's money behind that. Oh, there's this, there's that. And Dash is sort of I mean, obviously there is hype and speculation behind everything, including Dash. But Dash is not focused on the sizzle, but rather on the stake, right? right. <laughs> it focused Jeez. less on the hype and the trading stuff and actually try to bring that down and keep something nice and stable that then you can build practical use on top of. Yeah. Um, when my own experience, it feels kind of like the early days of, of Bitcoin. Uh, the early days of Bitcoin, people were like announcing, hey, I accept Dash or hey, this business accepts Dash and things like yes. that. In fact, um, it says Bitcoin, and 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 now we're seeing that with Dash. And yeah, I've written about this before as well, also on Dash Force News, dashforcenews.com, <laughs> about what I call there's this term out there called the flippening, right? Yeah, which has to do with as you know, we, Bitcoin. I like to say crypto diversification because then I can say div diversify your bonds. Yeah. Yes, and well, then use that picture, Wu Tang Clan. Wu -Tang. Yes, that's also. Um, I mean, it's probably a, a Wu Tang more... Financial. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm sure that that actually exists as a country, as a something. No, similar. it's a Dave Chappelle it's... skit. Yeah, yes. So, so uh, go ahead. that's the thing. It's of... Nothing to mess with. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> nothing, nothing to mess. <laughs> so I'm sure that crypto diversification is a much more accurate term. The flippening sort of specifically was uh, referred to Ethereum's recent rise. Yes. In that a lot of people were seeing Bitcoin, seeing this, the direction it was going in and the inability to, in the short term at least, or short midterm, or maybe long term, depending on how you want to qualify, to resolve the scaling debate. And we're just saying, we're going to flip our money to Ethereum, the next biggest thing. And it's not like a, we think Ethereum is cool for all things Ethereum does. It's more, we're going to throw into non-Bitcoin, and this is the biggest non-Bitcoin in the crypto yeah. space. So that's the flippening. That's what they call the flippening. There's this thing that I'm coining called the business flippening where everything's in like there's all the speculation with all these coins but bitcoin's the, the one that you use that's for practical things but over time you're seeing a lot of big a lot of businesses start using dash because it does a lot of the stuff that early bitcoin did but better and certainly way better than what bitcoin does now and with fees the way they are a lot of uh, a lot of um, technologies and businesses a lot of things don't work at that high price point for a transaction. I mean, a Bitcoin average Bitcoin transaction, right, is about a dollar fifty now, and that's more than the minimum hourly wage in a lot of countries. <laughs> oh, so, wow. if imagine if you built a system around doing like a micro remittance to the third world, imagine where your business would be now. Like, you just don't have a business model anymore. You go out of business. So, there's a lot of businesses that are just adding dash and starting to use that more and like wall of coins was one of the early ones that just jumped on uh, jumped on to do that fast easy crypto for cash and it really works a lot better with dash's model and they're seeing so in some days they're seeing greater transaction volume in dash than bitcoin obviously it fluctuates day to day sure then you got um purse.io which you know we uh, is a an escrow service that 
allows people to basically shop on Amazon.com for Bitcoin at a discount. They've said that they uh, do not plan to implement anything other than Bitcoin directly in the near future. They basically said, no, we're just doing Bitcoin. But there's Bitcart.io yeah. where you can buy a gift certificate for Amazon at a 20% discount. Yes. If you use Dash, it's only 15% with Bitcoin. Exactly. You got a uh, uh, you know, strapping Irish startup, Bitcart, Bitcart.io. They sell Amazon gift cards for Bitcoin, 15% off, and Dash, 20% off. Right? right. So this is now you don't have to go through purse anymore. Now is another option that's leveraging this where you can just save on all the transaction fees and you just, you know, have a great time, right? All these and then you got all the of course the exchanges that are adding uh, adding Dash. Recently, so today it was announced that Block Cipher is partnering with Dash. Now Block Cipher is like an API service that deals with a lot of the larger um, blockchain they, they touted as the largest um, blockchain services provider in the space, right? So, for example, they used to, I think they were former, formerly did uh, Purse.io's back end, not anymore, and do Kraken, do Zappo, do a lot of the big industry players go through uh, BlockCypher. And so basically that's going to be, that's going to make it so that any business wanting to add Dash now in the crypto space, any one that's curved that Bitcoin already trailblazed for, they're just going to be able to flip, pretty much flip a switch and just... Start it. Start using Dash. Wow. Well, and that's that's the thing with crypto is that once you've gotten one of them, getting the rest of them usually isn't that difficult. Now, some of them are more difficult than others. That brings to mind both Monero and Zcash because of their privacy functions and uh, whatnot. So, uh, once more, where can people find out about you, Joel, and what you're doing? The main place to go is dashforcenews.com. Excellent. Darren, do you have any final questions for Joel? No, no. I think it's great to have you on, Joel. Thank you. No, thank you very much for having me. Excellent. Well, just a reminder that you can tune in to Neocash Radio every Wednesday night. Don't want to miss a single moment of awesome Neocash content, including special episodes and bonus interviews like this one right here. Subscribe to our podcast on Google Play Music, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Podcast Addict, and more. Thanks again, Joel. Well, thank you very much for having me. In the studio with you, it's JJ. Darren. Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today.